Hello, hello, and welcome back to your semester one final review. Um, we are on the strangely numbered problem 8.5. Uh, why 8.5? Well, originally your final review had a whole bunch of questions, 50 or 60 questions, curated by the school district, but we, the awesome teachers at North Valley, has decided to add a few more questions that we thought uh, weren't well represented, but we thought may come up on the final. So problem 8.5, it shockingly relates to problem 8. So let's get to it. Um, problem 8, if you'll remember, asked you to solve an inequality that used or in the middle. And we thought that there wasn't a problem that used and, and so we should create one. And so we did. Our goal is to find the algebraic solution to this awesome compound inequality below. And remember, compound inequalities involve more than one equal sign. We have two equal signs here. Um, so let's break down this problem first, and then we'll talk about two different ways to display the solution. Um, this one says negative 3 is less than or equal to 2x plus 5, which in turn is less than 7. Now, there is another way to write this problem. We could have also said that 2x plus 5, and um, I'm going to actually tackle this guy first. Notice that if we zoom in, the alligator mouth, we'll draw on some cute little teeth right here, is facing the 2x plus 5. So I'm going to make sure the alligator mouth keeps facing, even though it's a greater than instead of a less than, negative 3. So saying this right here, negative 3 is less than or equal to 2x plus 5, is the same thing as saying 2x plus 5 is greater than or equal to negative 3. But because all of this is run together from here, we say, and at the same time, 2x plus 5 also must be less than 7. So if you don't see an and or an or in the problem, you can always split it apart and put an and in between. We're not going to do that, but it is important to understand the connection between these two different ways to write the same compound inequality. We are trying to find an x value that makes 2x plus 5 greater than negative 3 or equal, and at the same time also less than 7. Well, how does this work? Well, it's actually been written in the form that we want it to be written in, which is this one single compound inequality, and so I'm going to rewrite it down here. We should probably think of this compound inequality as having three sides. Now, how can you have three sides to an object? Well, you can have three sides and the same thing to an equation. We have one side over here, we have a second side in the middle, side in the middle, that doesn't make much sense, and we have a third side on the right. And our goal, of course, is to keep all three sides equally balanced, right? Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to all of the sides. So instead of two sides, we do it to all three. Now, what are we doing to each side? Um, well, we should probably focus on the side that has x, because with any equation or inequality, we want to isolate x. So the side, I think, that has x is the one that I circled in yellow, and there are two operations happening to x. 2 is attached to x by multiplication, and 5 is attached to x by addition. If we want to isolate x, what do we undo first? Well, hopefully you're thinking everyone's favorite acronym, SADMEP, PEMDAS backwards. And so this tells us the first thing we look to undo is addition and subtraction. Because we're adding by 5, we should probably undo that by subtracting 5. This is going to cancel out and leave us with a 2x. It's not going to change our signs here. We need to maintain three sides at all times. Um, but then... Is everything still balanced? Well, no, it's not. We only subtracted 5 from one of the three sides. We need to make sure that we subtract 5 from all three sides. We must maintain the balance, as all things should be, right? Perfectly balanced. So 7 minus 5 gives us 2. Negative 3 minus 5 more keeps us negative and turns it to negative 8. And then we think, okay, well, on this middle side, is x isolated? Well, no, it's not, because x is still being multiplied by 2. So how do we undo multiplying by 2? Well, we, of course, divide everything by 2. These cancel. Technically, they make a 1x, but we know we don't have to write a 1. We just have x isolated. And before I write these inequality symbols, we should be asking, well, wait, do we have to flip these inequality symbols? And I think in this case, no, we don't, because you only flip those inequalities um, in the case of an, a negative number. So on the second step, if there's a negative involved, if you're multiplying or dividing by a negative, you do have to flip the inequality. But we divide it by positive 2. It doesn't matter that this is a negative 8. It's the number we're operating by. So we divide it by a positive 2, which means we don't need to flip these. Very exciting. And so we end up like so.
This is the algebraic solution to our answer. And actually, I don't like the way I wrote that. I'm going to rewrite that one more time, just a little bit closer together. Um, there we go. And that's our answer. Now, you should also be comfortable displaying this answer in a graphical form, too. That's a lot of this first semester doing things using algebra equations and also graphing them. And although this problem doesn't ask you to graph it, I ask you right now, please display this as a graphical solution as well in case it hint, hint, pops up on your final. Um, how do we display this graphically? Well, we draw, of course, our number line. And we only have two important numbers we need on here. We need negative 4, that's closer to the negative side and positive 1 closer to the positive side. We know that there need to be circles on each of those. I always start with open circles. It's easier to fill in a circle than it is to erase. And then we start thinking, well, do any of these need to be filled in? Well, because x is allowed to be equal to negative 4 and equaled things are always solid, we do fill in the negative 4. But x cannot be equal to 1. It can only be less than, so we leave it open. Now, this says x has to be, and this is the tricky part, x has to be greater than negative 4. So although it says negative 4 is less than or equal to x, and actually let's change colors here, it says negative 4 is less than or equal to x, you can always write that with the order switched, but make sure that alligator mouth is still trying to eat the x on the other side. So it says x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. So if we start at negative 4 and we think, well, which way is greater? Greater means more positive, so we move to the right. Now, technically, if it was just that, we would actually shade all the way over to the right. So let's keep that there for a quick second, and we'll come back to it. Because we also need to debate what does x less than 1 mean. Well, that means start at 1 and go less. Less always means more negative. So technically, this one would go all the way the other way. However, the last part is remembering that technically an AND connects those. So what this really is saying, and I'll do it down below, is that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4, everything I did in blue, and at the same time, x has to be numbers that are less than 1. So if we think of a number over here like 5, 5 is greater than negative 4, but is 5 less than 1? No, it's not. It has to be both at the same time. So hopefully you can see here that instead of going all the way to one side and all the way to the other, our shading for this is actually just strictly in between these two. An AND will go in between the two values, and OR goes to the outsides. So thank you for tuning in. Keep studying, keep asking questions, and you will be successful on the